A question has been on my mind recently about Tudor and their many lines that they offer. I've made a few videos in the past looking at their creative opportunities, what they've been able to do and just how much the brand has been able to grow over the last five years. We've seen how they've taken creative licenses from Rolex, pretty much incorporating a lot of their vintage styling into their pieces. Tudor has always been the creative side of the Rolex family and they've been given the green light to do what they want. The expression I used in the past was, whatever the crown says, the shield follows. And I'm sure Rolex has a lot of ties with regards to just how Tudor is implementing their watches and creating them. There've also been some interesting ideas. I think Paul Thorpe mentioned this in a discussion that Tudor is designing their watches and creating them in such a way that they just underplay Rolex pieces. So they're not by any means going to be market leaders in the family and Rolex will always still be on top but they're almost creating pieces that are limiting their ability or suppressing their ability just so that they don't inadvertently compete directly with Rolex. So it's an interesting strategy that these two companies are really putting their heads together and coming up with. And for the most part, it's working extremely well. I mean, Tudor has done some exceptionally good work. But the question I'd like to pose is, is the Black Bay now overdone? Is it the only line that they're sticking to and because it sells so well, is that all they're interested in producing? Nowadays, all we see are Black Bay related pieces, Heritage Black Bay, Black Bay 58, Black Bay chronographs. And you think to yourself, what other avenues could they approach? Could they not try something different? It's a real issue when you're pushed into a box and are defined by your flagship. So a good example, just a crazy one off the top of my head, the Bee Gees. They began their career with a very Motown sort of hip hop styling, very pop in the way they used to perform. And as they tried to get more folk and approach their songs that way, the crowd didn't seem to follow them anywhere near as much as they were when they were in their heyday in the very beginning. So in many ways, the, the, the Black Bay is almost like the Bee Gees of watches at this point in time. <laughs> What kind of comparison is that? So we look at how the Black Bear line has been defined. We have the likes of the Ranger. We have the 58, the 41s, the Burgundies, the Harrods editions, the GMTs. All of these watches work on the same platform. It's almost like Tudor has developed a chassis that they're now just implementing all of their ideas onto. And I've said this a few times in previous videos that the one watch that really fascinated me was the P was it the P09 or the P01? It was the P01. What really fascinated me was the Tudor P01 when it was introduced, because it was a time when they could actually experiment with something new, break away from the typical mold of the Black Bay and try something different. Now, of course, they called it the Black Bay P01, but it's a very different looking watch. The approach has been changed in a few places. Of course, it's a recreation of a prototype from the 60s, but that's the thinking. Instead of implementing the same case design, the same bracelet, they kept the same dial architecture, but they built a completely new case around it. So it's not like they aren't lacking ideas. It's almost as if they are just sticking to what they can do well and what everyone defines them as, and that's as far as they are willing to go. At least at this point in time. They have made some amazing watches in the Black Bay family. Uh, the most recent release was the Tudor Black Bay Chronograph PVD that was launched alongside the All Blacks. I think it was made to uh, pay tribute to the All Blacks rugby team. If you know anything about the World Cup that's just been happening recently, Tudor was the official sponsor of the tournament, so very good marketing. But I continually think, are people getting bored of this? Is this watch becoming boring because it's just the same thing everywhere we look? The case design, the use of the bezels, the dials, the snowflake hands that many people don't like. Personally, when I look at the design of the divers and I see round plots with a snowflake hour hand, I kind of cringe a little bit because the snowflake hands need to work in tandem with a snowflake dial. And if you don't know what that is, I will put a picture of the 7016 uh, Tudor Snowflake on the screen for you now. So it's a question worth asking about 
what is this line planning on doing? What is Tudor going to do in the future? Because they can't just stick to one watch for the next 10 years. It's a nice idea, but these Black Bay pieces have kicked them off. They are now in the air. They are running. They're doing very well. The brand is successful. Uh, as a family brand linked to Rolex, they are working extremely well together. But they need to implement something new. They need to create something new. And their creative department has the capabilities of doing this. We've seen it before. It's all really down to the higher ups dictating whether or not they can introduce something else. I would love to see Tudor bring out a dress watch, a really, really nice dress watch or a functional dress sports watch in a similar way to how the date just defined an error many years ago. They could do something similar and create some kind of amalgamation piece. Just I'm thinking now about the Pelagos. The Tudor Pelagos has some of the most innovative ideas put into it of any dive watch on the market. We look at how the clasp has been integrated, the idea of incorporating left-hand drive, so the crown is the other way around on the case. It's genius. It's a brilliant set of ideas. So it's not like they're lacking in this department. They really could create some amazing things, and it's high time that they do. 2020 could be a defining moment for them to bring out something that none of us expected and really shake up the sports watch genre. And in many ways, I appreciate Tudor because they began as an offset from Rolex. They weren't anything more than just watches that pretty much housed easier to make movements inside Rolex cases. They were always considered the poor man's Rolex. But that term has been turned on its head at this point in time. The movements in the watches are in-house made. The finishing is sublime. The attention to detail is fantastic. So really, this, this new revival of the Tudor company, they are very competent in what they're doing. I'd be interested in hearing your thoughts about what they could release, whether they would be interested in ever evolving the brand and the design styling. Because looking at these pieces from a design sort of creative perspective, the Black Bay styled watches are getting kind of boring. And I don't like using the word boring with these watches because they are terrific pieces. And when it comes to premiering new watches and everyone sort of yawns and says, no, oh, it's just another Black Bay, it kind of digs you in the ribs a little bit because you want to see some expansion. You want to see some change. Imagine them taking the GMT Lion, for example, and creating some kind of annual calendar or a day date, as well as having a bezel. Watches that are more heavy duty, say, that range at 44 millimeters that have extreme depth and pressure ratings, that have screw down pushes for chronographs. A diving chronograph would be an example. You know, just create a new line that is more extreme or attacks the whole concept of born to dare, which is their slogan, a little bit more. Go into more detail. What I also like about the brand, and I think we can all agree, is that both sides, whether you are a Rolex diehard or an Omega diehard, you can look at this family of watches and say, Tudor's pretty cool. They're doing a great job. And the watches they are making are just as interesting. And I think we all deep down want to see this brand succeed. They have been succeeding. Of course, they're doing extremely well. But creatively, I want to see them break the boundaries and bring out something show-stopping.